Hey everyone, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some features of the Windows File Explorer that not everybody knows about. So here on the bottom we have File Explorer, and this is probably how you typically launch it. It's just by finding it down in your taskbar and clicking it. And there we go, it opens it up. Another way though that you can launch this is with the keyboard shortcut, Windows E. And so if you look down here, any keys that I press on the keyboard are going to show up for a couple seconds, just so you can see exactly what I'm typing on the keyboard. Um, so let's say we wanted to go into the C drive, into the Windows directory, into the System32 directory, there it is, and find the executable control.exe. So I can scroll around for it, maybe I can drag the scroll bar and look for it a little bit quicker, and there we go, I found it. Um, so that took a little bit of time, it wasn't super quick. I'm going to show you a faster way that you can do that. Um, so I'm going to close this, and again hit Windows E to launch File Explorer. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt-D to jump up into the address bar. Then you can just type C colon, hit enter. Um, from here though, a lot of people don't know that you can just start typing to find, or you know, jump to any uh, directory or file. So I'm going to type Windows or Win, hit enter, here I'm going to type Sys, that jumps right to system, use the down arrow to go to system32, hit enter, and now type control, and that jumps me straight to that control.exe. And so being able to just type uh, the file or the directory that you're looking for and jump straight to it is super awesome. Maybe I wanna find the curl executable, just type CURL, and there it is. Uh, I wanna jump to the drivers directory, let's just type drivers. Oh, you can see I messed up my spelling. Uh, so it actually didn't take me where I wanted to go. When that happens though, you just wait a second or two and type again. So if I can spell it correctly that time, there we go. Now I'm in the drivers directory. Um, maybe the name of the file or directory that you want to go to is too long. You don't want to type the whole thing out or you can't even remember what the last half of it is. Uh, so maybe I remember the executable I'm looking for it starts with perf, but I can't remember exactly what it's called. Just type perf and it'll jump you to that section of the files uh, if there are any called perf. It'll take you as close to it as it can get. And there I can see there's perfmon.exe. That's the file I was thinking about. Um, if you can't remember what the file or directory starts with, you can't remember the exact name of it, you can always do a search too. Maybe you just remember that perf was in the middle of the name. Uh, so to do that, you can use the search box up here. You can either click into it or use the keyboard shortcut control E to jump into it. Just type perf and hit enter. And so maybe we were looking for this performance diagnostics thing, um, right? So the search will find that for us. And so again, you can use Alt-D to jump up into the address bar or Control-E to jump into the search bar. And those keyboard shortcuts work with your internet browsers as well. So uh, Chrome or Firefox, here I can do Control-E, that'll jump me straight into the search box and I can search for whatever I want, maybe dogs. Um, or I can just do Alt-D and go to whatever uh, website I want to I want to go straight to right cool okay so now we're here uh, in File Explorer um, if you haven't noticed there's back and forward buttons over here so we can use back to go into that Windows System 32 directory back again to the Windows directory back again to the C drive and you can use the forward buttons as well and if we hover over them you'll see they also tell us the keyboard shortcut so alt right arrow to go forward and alt left arrow to go backward so I can just hold down the Alt key and hit back. Oh, I have to click on File Explorer. Uh, Alt key and then back, back. Why aren't you working? Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, and then, or just hold down the Alt key and forward, forward, or right, right to go forward again. Um, as well, if your mouse has back and forward buttons on it, I need a mouse with back and forward buttons. I can't stand a mouse without them. Uh, if you do have them, you can just use those buttons on your mouse to jump back and forward. And again, that works not only in File Explorer, but also in your web browser, uh, Firefox, Chrome, Edge. It works in uh, Slack or Teams. Tons of applications support the back and forward functionality, so just use the buttons on your mouse. Or again, you can use the Alt to left arrow, Alt to right arrow. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the C drive. It's going to hump jump into the temporary directory here in my file explorer tests. And so here, um, let's say I wanted to create a new folder. Uh, well, there is a, you can always right click and bring up the context menu and choose new folder. And so that's one way to create a new folder. There's also the new folder button right here. You can just click that. Um, and if we hover over that though, it tells us the keyboard shortcut. So control shift N. 
So if we want, we can use Control Shift N to create a new folder, and then we can just name it. Our hands are already on the keyboard, and so let's give it the name we want. I'm gonna call it old name. And that sort of of takes us into the next thing I wanted to show you was that uh, rather than having to right click on a folder to rename it, you can just use the F2 key. So I'm gonna press F2 on the folder and now I can give it new name. Okay. And just like a lot of other applications, File Explorer also supports undo and redo. So I can hit Control Z to do undo and it changed the name from new name back to old name. Or I can do Control Y to redo. And so it changed the name again from old name back to new name. Uh, so that's super convenient. That works not only for renaming files and directories, but also uh, for if you delete them. So maybe I delete this new name directory. So it's gone, I hit the delete key. I can do control Z to undo and bring it back. Um, the other thing I wanted to show off was permanently deleting files. So if you just hit the delete key or uh, right click on it and choose delete from here, it actually doesn't delete it, it just sends it to the recycle bin. Uh, but if you want to permanently delete it, which is a really good idea, uh, if you have a whole bunch of files you need to delete or really big files, like they're hundreds of megabytes or even gigabytes, uh, you don't want those just being left around on the hard drive, taking up disk space. So it's a good idea to permanently delete them. Rather than having to delete them to the recycle bin and then go empty the recycle bin or find them and delete them from there, you can just hold down the shift key while you hit the delete key and this will permanently delete it. And because it's permanent, you can't undo it or go find it in the recycle bin. You'll get a prompt here saying, are you sure you want to permanently delete this? And we're going to say yes. Okay. Uh, so the next thing I wanted to show you here was opening another uh, file explorer window at this location. So we already know we can hit Windows key E now to bring up a new instance, but we're sort of back at the home location, like back at the C drive. I want to open up another instance of File Explorer right in this directory. Uh, so to do that, you can just hit Control N. And it opens up another instance, and it's at that same directory in our, in our File Explorer tests directory. So that's super handy. If you can't remember the keyboard shortcut for that, you can just go up to the File menu here, and it's right there, Open New Window. And if you hover over it, it tells you the keyboard shortcut there as well, Control N. So if you click that, it opens up a new window. Uh, another thing I'll show you is sometimes you want to open up a command prompt in the directory that you're currently in. And to do that, it's super easy. You can just type CMD into the address bar, hit enter, and that opens up a command prompt at that location. Uh, so unfortunately, this trick doesn't work for PowerShell or Bash. You can't just type those into the address bar. But what you can do, at least for PowerShell, is go into the file menu and there's open Windows PowerShell. So you can open a regular session or one as administrator. And so if we say open um, PowerShell, it'll open it at that location. There it is, C temp file explorer tests. So it's already in the directory that we wanted. Uh, so one of the last things I wanted to show you here was, uh, you'll see my file names here. They, you can see the extension on the end, the dot text. By default, Windows doesn't have that turned on and it really annoys me. Uh, so to turn that on, so you can always see file extensions, just go to the View tab and into Options. And then here, you want to go into the View tab again and just scroll down a little bit. Uh, so by default, Hide Extensions for Known File Types is ticked. Just uncheck that, say Apply, and then also apply to all, all folders. Otherwise, it'll only apply to the folder that you're currently in in File Explorer. And so do that, and then you'll be able to see file extensions everywhere. Uh, I guess maybe the last thing that I wanted to show you, another way to open up a new instance of File Explorer could also be to hold down the Shift key while you click on, uh, click on it down in the taskbar. You can see that opened up a new window, but not in the, the current directory. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning this, though, is that that's super handy for other applications. You can see I have Notepad open here, and this just lists all the things that I've talked about here today with you. Um, but if I hold Shift while I click on Notepad, it opens up a new instance of Notepad. So that works for any application. And if you wanted to open Notepad as administrator, you can do the same thing, but hold Control and Shift while you click. And so I'm gonna get a little prompt here, uh, just for my UAC settings saying, are you sure you wanna do this as an admin? And I said, yes, but uh, yeah, that's super handy. So here's all the things we talked about today. Oh, I guess I did forget to show you one, which is copy as path. Uh, this one can be uh, super handy as well. So back on the home menu here, I'm just going to 
choose this shortcuts.txt file. I'm going to click on copy as path, and that's going to copy the path of that file or directory, if I had a directory selected, and put it on my clipboard. So now I can come into here and I can paste it. And that's the full path to that text file. Um, so this is super handy. Uh, the other way to get at that, though, is to uh, hold shift while you right click on the file. So I'm going to hold shift and right click. And then it shows up here, copy as path. If you just right click, uh, that copy as path doesn't show up. I'm not sure why they decided to hide it behind the shift key, but that's how you get to it. Um, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because, uh, or why it's good to know, uh, know how to do that, as well as the keyboard shortcut for creating a new folder, is you can do this in other file explorer windows. Uh, for example, if you're in an application and you go to the Save As dialog or the Open File dialog, here, if I wanted to create a new folder, um, I can just do Control Shift N, and that creates my new folder. Um, if I wanted to maybe get the path of this directory, I can hold shift while I right click on it and choose uh, copy as path, which is down here. There it is, copy as path. I'm going to cancel this and now I can paste that and there's the path to that directory. Okay, so I hope you found this informative and useful and I know uh, these little tips and tricks help me be more productive and just a little, like a few seconds quicker uh, every day, but it adds up. So I hope you guys find this useful. Thanks. If you found this video helpful or have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see me create more content like this. Thank you.